In this part we are talking with Zoltan Vastsi, who has been breeding American Staffordshire Terriers and American Pitbull Terriers for more than three decades. Zoltan is a breeder and an international judge of this two breeds. Our main question is that what are the similarities and the differences between the Pitbulls and the Amstaffs? It is our question because a lot of our viewers and followers asked us to show them these differences. In the first round, if we are talking about genetics, from a genetical point of view, there are no differences between Pitbull Terriers and Amstaffs. Between these two breeds only selection decided that what direction they were going and how they were bred. The first registration of the American Pitbull Terrier happened in 1898, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, where a man, named Zachary Bennett, founded the United Kennel Club, and he began to register these dogs. Mr. Bennett himself had Pitbull Terriers. After this, in 1909, the American Dog Breeders Association was founded, which also began to register American Pitbull Terriers, mainly the working line ones. In these times the American Staffordshire Terrier did not yet exist as a registered dog breed, the Amstaff breed became, in quotes, official only in July 1936, when the STCA or Staffordshire Terrier Club of America began to register the Staffordshire Terriers officially. They received a letter from the English Kennel Club, in which they wrote that the purebred Stafford Higher Terrier can only be the English Staffordshire Bull Terrier, not the ones that are registered in the U.S. To avoid this conflict, the Americans put the word American before the Staffordshire Terrier, and this is how the new breed with the new name was born. They created the breed standard and the confirmation began. So, this is how their official life began. Zoltan, if we are talking about the past and the history of this two breed, what were they and what were they originally used for? Are there any differences between them? In the first half century of their development, there were not major differences, and they were not even separate breeds. These dogs in majority were working farm dogs all over the vast regions of the United States. They had to guard the values and the personal safety of their owners and their families. Of course we should not forget that the minority of them were bred and kept for dog fights and were selected to be effective in the arenas and pits. According to today's estimates the percentage of fighting dogs among them was less than 5%, but as these dogs were popular and very numerous in America, this small percentage meant a lot of dogs. As I told you earlier, until 1936, the name, American Staffordshire Terrier did not even exist, so these dogs were called pit bulls, or half and half, or simply Staffordshire Terriers. Even John Curvino, who was a legend in pit bull circles, bred dogs on the name of Staffordshire Terriers. Of course these dogs have several local names, as at that time people did not travel a lot, and there were a lot of local names according to the slang of that time. If we are talking about pit bull terriers, the majority of people believe, and partly rightfully, that these dogs were primarily gladiator, or fighting dogs and they were used primarily for these purposes. You told us that the majority of them were so-called farm dogs. What the farm dogs were doing and what was expected of them? The primary task of these dogs was to keep predators away from the animals and the livestock of the household. Wolves, coyotes and of course the stray dogs that could harm the livestock if they got close to the animals. Of course in tasks like this it was very important that the dogs were intelligent, that they had a strong bite, and that they could be burthened both physically and mentally. At that time people thought in a simple way and set boundaries and expectations. If the dogs fit into these boundaries and worked well they were bred, but if not, then they were deselected. Unfortunately modernization caused a lot of defects in general and in dog breeding a synology as well. If you look at a pit bull terrier and you look at an Amstaff, of course you can see some differences between them. What are these differences and why are these differences appeared? Are they the consequence of a conscious breeder decision, or, of something else? These are differences that were created and bred consciously. Of course functions what these dogs were used for decided their future anatomy. After the Amstaff was created and formed, it has become an important goal that the aggression level towards other dogs and animals could be decreased, as it ruins the comfort level of owners if they live together with an animal who is aggressive with all other animals and cannot be let of the leash any time because of this. In connection with the pit bull terrier, it was not as important as in the case of the Amstaffs. In general, pit bulls are much leaner and in most cases more athletic than that of the Amstaffs. 
Anstaffs are more stocky dogs with more covered tones, while the pit bulls are more bony and stringy, have much more color variations. It is usually sad that an Amstaff is a pit bull in tuxedo. As breeding is going on a more and more homogenized stock is being created and, if you are a good and responsible breeder, you breed only with the best bloodlines and you do not breed only to produce quantity over quality. As I have been breeding Amstaffs for more than 30 years, if I sit down with any of my puppies who were born in my kennel, I see the good qualities of their ancestors in them, many times in their gestures, moods and even in their funny tricks. If we are talking about the so-called red nose and blue nose pit bulls, what these notions, or conceptions mean? Are there any differences between them? If I want to answer you in a very simple and funny way, the difference between them is that the red nose pit bull's noses are red and the blue nose pit bull's noses are blue. Of course I will give some more detailed explanation. In the case of the red nose pit bulls, when they were formed, there were different type of dogs. One of the for example were the so-called old family pit bulls, who were more terrier-like dogs, with sharper heads and less bulldog-like. The majority of these dogs had red noses, and they had in almost all cases amber, or sometimes dark brown colored eyes. Of course these dogs have different variations from red red nose, through chocolate red nose even to buckskin, or to light yellow nose color versions. So, the red nose is a very wide color palette among pit bulls. In the case of the blue nose pit bulls, we are talking about blue dogs in 99.9% .9 of the cases. As we know in genetics, the blue gene does not exist, it is caused by a gene which weakens the black color. Like in the case of the red nose variations, there is a wide spectrum of colors where the blue nose one fit. In the old times, in the time of the old family dogs, other variations also existed, like the old family black nose for example. If there are so many genetic similarities between the pit bulls and the Amstaffs, are the red nose and blue nose specialities appear at the Amstaffs as well? To tell you the truth, in some cases yes. You have to know that in the US, until the 1970s there were interoperability between the kennel clubs, so many dogs had double registrations, they had a registry at the UKC and one at the American Kennel Club. So these dogs could be registered at two kennel clubs, and could be the champion of two different show if he was so good quality. Even I myself experienced this genetic heritage sometimes. In the 1990s for example we had a wonderful Brindle Amstaff male, who we brought together with a champion winner Brindle bitch, and we expected, in quotes, perfect puppies, and we were happy. What happened? For our biggest surprise, in the litter, out of nine puppies seven was Brindle, and two was with complete red nose marks. So, it happened even in the 1990s. Of course these dogs had good owners and were perfect from all aspects, but were not bred any further. Another story, approximately five years ago I visited one of my friends, who is an above-the-average Amstaff breeder, who showed me a puppy. First I saw him from a half-profile, and it was beautiful. When the puppy looked at me I was astonished to see that this Amstaff puppy has a red nose and amber eyes. So, I think that these genetic similarities will occur again and again, more and more occasionally, as we progress with breeding, but blood will not turn to water, that is for sure.